Hey there, it's Jordan with Status Quo. Uh, breaking developments in the Uvalde massacre, uh, which really, really looks more and more like a cover-up uh, of one of the worst police responses possibly in American history uh, that tragically killed 19 students in addition to two teachers. Uh, let's first hear uh, from the director of Texas Public Safety, who spoke at a hearing uh, in the Texas uh, Congress today. However, we do know this. There's compelling evidence that the law enforcement response to the attack at Robb Elementary was an abject failure and antithetical to everything we've learned over the last two decades since the Columbine massacre. Three minutes after the subject entered the West Building, there was sufficient number of armed officers wearing body armor to isolate, distract, and neutralize the subject. The only thing stopping a hallway of dedicated officers from entering room 111 and 112 was the on-scene commander, who decided to place the lives of officers before the lives of children. The officers had weapons, the children had none. The officers had body armor, the children had none. The officers had training, the subject had none. One error, 14 minutes and eight seconds. That's how long the children waited and the teachers waited in rooms 111 to be rescued. And while they waited, the on seat commander waited for a radio and rifles. Then he waited for shields. Then he waited for SWAT. Lastly, he waited for a key that was never needed. The post Columbine doctrine is clear and compelling and unambiguous. Stop the killing, stop the dying. You can't do the former unless you do, you can't do the latter unless you do the former. So right there, you have uh, really bombshell information within three minutes, within three minutes. Uh, there were at least 11 officers that entered the school. Uh, at least two of them had uh, long guns. Uh, you had officers with body shields, uh, and uh, the director of the Texas Public Safety said there was enough manpower and weaponry to engage uh, the shooter as well as neutralize him, which basically means uh, stop him. Uh, we also know within 24 seconds, uh, the shooter had started shooting. So although uh, the police response was horrendous, uh, the shooter had already started his massacre very, very quickly, meaning, you know, we don't know how many, but uh, a considerable amount of those children were shot uh, right away. Uh, we don't know how many died instantly or, uh, you know, slowly bled out, uh, but we do know uh, a considerable amount were shot right away due to the AR-15 and the high capacity magazines. We also know uh, in this hearing that the director of Texas Public Safety um, read aloud radio communications and other things, uh, which revealed that this door that the police thought was locked, they didn't even check whether it was locked for over an hour. Uh, we seem, it seems that it was not locked. Uh, let me read here. Uh, a Texas state Senate panel is holding a hearing Tuesday on school safety, police training, and social media in the wake of last month's shooting. Among those testifying are Texas Department of Public Safety Director Stephen McCraw. Texas Department of Public Safety Director Stephen McCraw walked through and updated timelines of events from the Uvalde shooting and read aloud from a transcript of police radio communications. The transcript describes Uvalde School District Police Chief Pete Arenado and other officers speculating on the status of those inside the classroom and painstakingly debating whether and how to breach the door. Nearly an hour after the gunman entered the school, according to the transcript, an officer told Aradonado, people are going to ask why we're taking so long. Quote, we're trying to preserve life, Aradano replied, per the transcript. We're trying to preserve life. So they sat there for over an hour. They didn't even check if the door was locked. Uh, they heard more gunshots going, and they did nothing. And this officer said they did nothing. The commanding officer said they did nothing because they were, quote, trying to preserve life. Uh, 
I just, I can't imagine being a parent who lost a child in this school listening to this. Uh, let's look at more. Reviewing the timeline of the Evalde shooting, Texas Department of Public Safety Director Steve McGraw said that enough officers and equipment arrived on site within three minutes of the gunman entering the school to neutralize him. He said that the on-scene commander, Chief, uh, Chief Pete Arenado, was the only thing stopping officers from breaching the classroom, uh, McGraw said. Uh, Arenado decided to place the lives of officers before the lives of children. He also called it an abject failure. Uh, I also want to point out uh, this important fact here. So dispatch, dispatch asked if the door is locked, to which a Uvalde PD officer replies, I'm not sure, but we have a hooligan to break it. Let me repeat, we have a hooligan to break it. So they had equipment that the, normally uh, is used by fire departments, uh, you know, in fires to break a door, uh, open a door. They had that equipment there pretty much right away. Somehow that equipment did not come into the building. Uh, again, a hooligan, which is most commonly used by fire department uh, and things like that. How that is possible, it, it's just mind boggling. It really is mind boggling. They had enough officers there uh, to at least uh, get the shooter to stop shooting, to neutralize him. Uh, but they waited, did nothing, and they had uh, this device uh, called a hooligan uh, for over an hour, but it was not brought inside. It was sitting there outside. So uh, it's really, really just mind boggling. Let me give you more on that. Uh, within the first minutes of the law enforcement response, an officer said the Halligan, a firefighting tool that is also sometimes spelled hooligan, that's why I was mispronouncing it, it's a Halligan, was on site. It wasn't brought into the school until an hour after the first officers entered the building. Authorities didn't use it and instead waited for keys. Again, they waited for keys, assuming the door was locked, without looking to see if the door was locked. I mean, you just can't make this up. Um, no security footage from inside the school showed police officers attempting to open the doors to classrooms 111 and 112, which were connected by an adjoining door. Aradano told the Tribune that he tried to open one door and another group of officers tried to open another, but that the door was reinforced and impenetrable. Those attempts were not caught in the footage reviewed by the Tribune. Some law enforcement officials are skeptical that the doors were ever locked. What that means is, he said that they tried to open the door, uh, which were connected by an adjoining door, but they were impenetrable. But those quote unquote attempts to open the door were not found on the security camera, meaning they lied. They did not try to open the door just like they didn't look if the doors were locked. Uh, it, it's just, again, insane. And you got to go back to this statement. You got to go back to this, um, this comment by one of the officers who was standing next to the chief when he said, uh, what are we doing here? People are going to be asking why we're taking so long. Again, uh, McGraw said to one of the on-scene commanders, uh, Uvalde School Police Chief Pete Aradano, uh, was the only thing stopping officers from breaching the classroom. Uh, and nearly an hour after the gunman entered the schools, according to the transcript, an officer told Aradano, people are going to ask why we're taking so long. We're trying to preserve life. Well, you really have to ask, what, what does that mean you're trying to preserve life? You heard more gunshots going through. You, you heard more gunshots going through. Uh, you Apparently, he didn't have his radio. Uh, reports are coming out. He didn't bring the radio because he wanted both of his hands uh, free if he needed to shoot. Of course, it doesn't seem he did shoot. We're talking about the police chief here, but he's trying to preserve life. Well, you're not even, you're not even taking the basic steps to see can you breach that door? Is the door even locked? Uh, you apparently lied saying you tried to get through that door, but it was impenetrable. That was a lie. Uh, so you have to wonder, I mean, was this chief uh, just scared? Was he, you know, didn't want to put his officers next to him, lives at risk, which obviously is counter to what 
the the police are supposed to do. Uh, it, it's just kind of mind kind of mind boggling. Uh, the complete incompetence, uh, it seems, uh, cowardice uh, of this chief. Uh, you can't speak to the other officers because they were following uh, the chain of command here. Uh, I want to also read this part. Uh, officers had access to four ballistic shields inside the school during the standoff with the gunman, according to law enforcement. Uh, a transcript. The first arrived 58 minutes before officers stormed the classroom. The last arrived 30 minutes before. So they had shields, ballistic shields, almost an hour before they stormed the classroom. Um, it, it, it's just unbelievable. Uh, at least some officers on the scene seem to believe that Arenado was in charge inside the school. And at times, Arenado seemed to be issuing orders, such as directing officers to evacuate students from other classrooms. That contradicts Arenado's assertion that he did not believe he was running the law enforcement response. I mean, that's hard to believe that he didn't believe he was running the law enforcement response. Yet the other officers are directly asking him, why are we waiting so long? Obviously, he knew he was in charge. Uh, most of the video from inside the school is captured by a wide angle camera position inside the school building's northwest entrance, the same one the gunman used. The camera looks straight south from its north ceiling perch and officers offers a slight view of the entrance to classrooms 111 and 112 to the left. Uh, the Tribune, Texas Tribune, also reviewed transcripts of radio traffic and body camera footage. They show that the gunman arrived on campus at 11.28 a.m. He appeared to have been planning a shooting for a while. Uh, in October, according to law enforcement's timeline, he withdrew from Uvalde High School. A month later, when he was still 17, he purchased some gun accessories online, including rifle slings and a military carrier vest. He began buying his ammunition in April and purchased his gun on his 18th birthday. Uh, and I want to read uh, the transcript of the phone call from Chief Arredondo uh, with the police uh, dispatcher. Uh, Chief Hey, it's Arredondo. It's Arredondo. Can you hear me? No, I have to tell you where we're at. It's an emergency right now. I'm inside the building. I'm inside the building with this man. He is an AR-15. He shot a whole bunch of times. We're inside the building. He's in one room. I need a lot of firepower. So I need this building surrounded, surrounded with as many AR-15s as possible. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, Dispatcher can be heard talking in the background, asking what room number the chief says, is the teacher with him? Is the teacher with him? Is the teacher with him? Is she in the same room as him? Can you hear me, ma'am? Uh, I'm right here, the dispatcher says. Chief Arredondo, ma'am, is the teacher with him in his classroom? Uh, dispatcher, she's in another classroom. She's in room 102. Another person possible shot across from her. Chief Arredondo, okay, we have him in the room. He's got an AR-15. He shot a lot. He's in the room. He hasn't come out yet. We're surrounded, but I don't have a radio with me. Please let all units know he's going to be in the room. He's in room 111 or 112, and we're in here. I'm in the hallway. Uh, Sergeant, Sergeant are here. Uh, the names aren't put in there, but we need this place surrounded. And if you have SWAT, I need them set up on the south side of the building, which is the building nearest the funeral home. Uh, dispatcher confirmed SWAT location, Chief Arredondo. Yes, and they need to be outside of this building prepared because we don't have enough firepower right now. It's all pistols and he has an AR-15. If you could get the SWAT, te SWAT team set up by the funeral home, okay. And we need, yes, I need some more firepower in here because we all have pistols and this guy's got a rifle. So I don't have a radio. I don't have a radio if somebody could come in. Uh, the dispatcher asked if he could stay on the phone. I am, but I'm going to drop it when he comes out the door. All right. So I need you to bring a radio for me and give me my radio uh, for me. I need to get one rifle. Hold on. I'm trying to set him. I'm trying to set him. I'm trying to set him up right now. Okay. Do me a favor. Call me when SWAT is set up. I'm going to have you on vibrate though. Call me twice if you have to. Okay. All right. Thank you. What's remarkable about that is he says uh, we're surrounded. No, the shooter was surrounded by you and the 10 other officers that were with you with several of them had ballistic shields. Uh, two of them had long guns, according to uh, the Texas uh, head of the Texas uh, public safety. Uh, and even if you only had pistols and he had an AR-15, your duty is to charge, not to wait after you've already heard shots uh, and you don't know what this shooter is going to do next. That is the duty of these officers. 
that is the active duty protocol. So he was viewing it apparently that if I don't have an army around me, uh, he was prioritizing the officer's safety rather than uh, the student's safety. I get it. It's a scary thing. That's why I wouldn't be a police officer, but that's what they signed up for. Uh, and most importantly, it would seem to me they were waiting for a key under the faulty assumption that the door was locked. It seems like the door wasn't locked because they were too scared to go up to the door to see if it was locked or see if they could get in. So there's a whole lot here that seems like, frankly, at least the chief, the chief uh, uh, of the chief of this was chicken shit. Uh, I can't speak to the other officers who maybe wanted to storm the gates, but were listening to their commanding officer. Uh, but how many students died? And again, they had a Halligan, which is uh, an equip piece of equipment that is can be used to pry open doors. It was there for an hour. They didn't use it for some reason. It, it just defies logic. It defies logic. And let's not just keep it at the police here. Uh, apparently, Texas Governor Greg Abbott is in on the cover up here. Uh, this is from the Texas Tribune. In the past week, Texas Governor, Governor Greg Abbott has joined the growing list of state and local officials fighting the release of records that could help bring clarity to how the emergency response unfolded during last month's deadly shooting in Uvalde. The governor's office strayed from that broader opposition Monday, granting a request under the Texas Public Information Act from a Houston television station that sought the handwritten notes he used when he first spoke publicly about the shooting. The notes appear to support Abbott's claim that he was misled when he initially praised law enforcement efforts during the mass shooting that resulted in the death of 19 children and two educators. The recent release by Abbott underscores both the tremendous power government officials have to decide what is in the public interest and the unwillingness to release records that could call their agency's actions into question. ProPublica and the Texas Tribune have submitted about 70 public information requests that could answer large question, larger questions at, as state and local readers continue to offer conflicting accounts about why law enforcement did not confront the gunmen sooner. Those requests include 911 audio record, recordings, body and police car camera footage, and communications among local, state, and federal agencies. The newsrooms also requested use of force documents, death records, and ballistic reports. Three weeks after the shooting, government officials have not provided the news organizations a single record related to the emergency response. Quote, the public wants immediate transparency, said Kelly Shannon, executive director of the Freedom of Information Foundation of Texas. The most enlightened law enforcement agencies understand the importance of being transparent, being open, and doing it the right way. Since the shooting, state police have said Pete Arredondo, the chief police for the school district, erred in judgment by keeping law enforcement officers from immediately confronting the barricaded gunman despite 911 calls. And again, we don't even know if he was barricaded because the door, it seems, was not locked. Uh, it just gets worse. Uh, the more information that comes out, uh, this seems like a significant amount of children might have been saved uh, without this complete incompetence and cowardice, in my opinion. Um, but let's not forget, because the Republicans would like you to, to think this. Uh, the gunmen started shooting in 24 seconds. It's very likely a lot of these shooters were killed almost instantly or uh, bled out relatively quickly. So although there are lives that could have been saved, there are probably a significant amount of lives that would have never been saved regardless of the police response. And that is because an 18 year old was able to buy an AR-15 on his birthday with and, and had purchased 375 rounds. Frankly, I don't think any age should be able to buy an AR-15. It is a military weapon that even people in the military have said do not belong in civilian hands. So there are two separate stories, the guns and the police incompetence and cowardice. Uh, we'll stay on this as more of the cover-up and gross incompetence comes out. Thanks for watching, and make sure to tune in to Status Coup's daily live stream Monday through Thursday at 5 o'clock Eastern Time and Fridays at 4 o'clock Eastern Time.